Hey guys, it's Keith from Free Marketing Help. Today I wanted to talk about uh, building a plan for your brand. But before we really get into that, I want to go over some basic things that I think we need to, to kind of cover so you have an understanding of uh, marketing in general and why it works. So if you ask yourself, why do brands or businesses advertise? Or why do you advertise? Why do customers buy things? What do you think? Why do you buy things? Well, two reasons. You either need it or you want it, right? So if you think about your business, what creates these needs and wants or needs and wants in general? Triggering events in life, they happen every day. And triggering events cause us to need or want specific services or products. Here's an example. Say you walk out the door to go to work today and you're about to get in your car and you realize you have a flat tire. That's a triggering event. All of a sudden, you need a tire replaced, right? Or fixed. When you woke up in this, the morning, you weren't planning on redoing or uh, replacing your tire, but a triggering event happened in life causing you to need a tire repair. So when trigger events happen, we think about what we need or want and where to get it and who to get it from. So again, thinking about your business, what are the triggered events for your business? Who do they think of? And why is it so important? Because the decision to buy takes place in mind, not online, not in a store. Before you drive to the store and buy something, you think about what you want and where you're going to get it, right? And then you go get in your car and you drive to wherever that place is uh, or you go online. But the decision to buy takes place in the mind. And it's important to be known before you're needed or wanted. Why? Like I just said, because we decide to buy something before we buy it. So you want to be known before you're needed. The main reason to advertise is to become the brand or business the customers think of first and feel best about when a trigger an event in their life causes a need or want for the product or service that you sell. It's a popularity contest. It really is. 80% of people are likely or very likely to shop the very first place that comes to mind. You must be in the top three. So every day, customers want to improve something in their home, go to a gym, make a reservation, um, order a dozen donuts, go to the bank, go to the grocery stores. And if you think about all these places that they're going to, how do you become known? Well, there's four keys to successful advertising, reach, frequency, consistency, and the message. Let's look at those a little more uh, deeply. Reach, where can I reach enough of the right people to hear my message, right? You can define the target as the three graphics, demographic, psychographic, or a geographic, where you want to target your people. Frequency, how often are you reaching them? How often do they hear your commercial or how often do they see your commercial or read your commercial? We're in a hyper cluttered world and there's a curve of forget forgetfulness. They say sleep's the great eraser. So you see new stuff every day, but when you go home, you go to bed at night, you go to sleep, you kind of take the eraser and wipe off that chalkboard in your mind, wake up in the next morning and you start over. So you have to stay in front of people frequently to be remembered. Consistency, triggering, happen, triggering events happen all the time. People had a flat tire this morning. People are gonna have a flat tire next week and the month after that and the month after that. There's always a continuous cycle of people that are in need for the product or service that you're offering. So you wanna consistently stay in front of those advertising because you never know when a trigger event is gonna happen in their life that's gonna cause a need or a want for the product or service that you offer. And the message, you can have all the reach in the world. You can be running commercials uh, multiple times throughout the week. So they're hearing it frequently. You could be advertising long-term. So consistently month after month, they're hearing your message. But if your message isn't memorable, 
you're missing one of the four keys and it's not going to work. So think about it. You're getting enough reach, you have frequency, you have consistency. But if your message is, hey, we're doing oil changes next week for $500, sign up now. You're probably not going to get a lot of business and not going to sell a lot of oil changes because your message is bad. So you have a lot of local options from advertising to consider, but when you think of all the local options, how do you decide what works best for you? I mean, you have outdoor, broadcast TV, cable TV, newspaper, digital, direct mail, and radio. So with all of these options, how do you decide what's gonna work best? Well, to answer that question, let's talk about what makes advertising successful, right? What are the common characteristics of the best performing advertising? Nielsen did a survey, a survey over a six year period and they looked at 3,200 different advertising campaigns. And what they found was that all of the successful ad campaigns shared in these eight characteristics. And here they are. Number one, you want to reach potential customers. And as you look across the columns there at all the different media options, every media option reaches customers in one way or the other, right? You get down through number two, you want to influence close to the point of purchase. Number three, provide local consumer interactions. Number four, create an emotional connection. Number five, build trust and credibility. Number six, provide unskippable engagement. Number seven, be cost effective. And number eight, deliver affordable ads quickly. As we get down through these, again, every media option delivers or reaches customers in one way or the other. But what you may not have known is that America or radio is America's number one mass media, reaching over 90% of the population every week. Not everybody listens to the radio, but nine out of 10 people do. Number two, you want to influence close to the point of purchase. Number three, you want to provide local consumer interactions. Number four, create emotional connections. And as you see, as we go down through these different characteristics, every media option has merit in different categories of the eight characteristics here. But as you go down through here, radio is the only local media option that checks off all eight boxes and delivers all eight characteristics for the best performing advertising. And that's why radio consistently delivers the highest ROI of any other media option. Here's the different ROIs. Now this was just recently updated, um, but you can see radio is a 10 to one return. Digital is a strong second, which is why we typically put radio and digital campaigns together because when you put them together, you're just increasing your overall ROI. So radio really is as simple as one, two, three. It's the most cost-effective local advertising option to deliver the four keys and only radio delivers all eight characteristics. Radio is the most cost efficient local advertising option on a cost per thousand basis. And that's why radio delivers the highest ROI of local media option. Radio really is everywhere if you think about it. More people listen to radio today in more different places, in more different ways, and on more different devices than ever before in the history of advertising. Think about it. You know, people don't just listen in the car on the way to and from work. People listen while they're at work. They listen on home smart devices like Alexa or Google, um, on downloadable apps like TuneIn or the iHeartRadio app. These are all different ways that people are consuming radio. So that advertising campaign that I talked about, here's the, uh, a graph of all the 3,200 ad campaigns laid out. And what they found was that 71% of the campaigns were on multiple platforms, meaning they weren't just doing TV or just doing radio or just doing digital. They were on multiple platforms. And as you add additional platforms, it increases your ROI incrementally. That's why um, Cumulus also offers an assortment of digital products to enhance your base radio buy. Kind of falls into three different buckets. We have C-mail or our specifically tailored email campaigns. We have C services, which is basically your online presence or how you look online and C target, which is anything banner ads related, whether it's standard display ad, uh, niche targeting display, responsive display, local video, um, blended OTT or OTT, all different options that you can do to target your ideal customer on their desktop, on their tablets and right on their smartphones. 
So email marketing, I'm sure you're familiar with that, right? We develop a targeted list. Uh, we send out your message and then we drive traffic to either your website, your event, or your place of business. C services is how you appear online. It's search engine optimization. It's making your um, website search engine optimized so it ranks for your top keywords for whatever your service or product is. Google AdWords, uh, you can do AdWords search engine um, management, which is all pay-per-click. Uh, Facebook, Instagram advertising on a pay-per-click basis, social media posting, and website design and hosting. Anything about the way you look online is what our C services products offer. Um, display advertising is C target. Again, everything banner ads related, whether it's online, on a desktop, on a tablet, on your smartphone, uh, or video display or local OTT. OTT is um, over the top connected devices like Roku or Apple TV or YouTube TV, things like that, where you're streaming the services rather than uh, through the cable company. So targeting tactics that we use for C target for display, we can use keyword search retargeting which is targeting anybody that's searching for your relevant keywords online. I'm not talking specifically Google. I'm talking on any website that has a search bar. If somebody's searching for it, we can capture that data and we can target those individuals. Contextual targeting. This is any targeting that's done based on websites that you're visiting that are contextually relevant to uh, whatever your product or target is. Behavioral targeting. You can target people um, based on places they shop, uh, websites they visit, things they buy, uh, website retargeting, people that have been to your website, we can stay in front of them, keep reminding them that you're relevant. Mobile geofencing is being able to draw an invisible fence around a real world location, like a competitor's business or uh, a lot where there's a lot of people that you're trying to target. Basically, wherever your target customers uh, are, we can draw an invisible fence around that specific location and try to capture as many smartphone IDs that go into that zone. And then once we capture the IDs, we can start putting your offer in front of these people on websites that they're already visiting and through apps that they already use. And then also addressable geofencing. That's being able to, again, draw an invisible fence around location, but actually do it to a mailing list of maybe you know up to a million houses. If you have a mailing list of addresses and you wanna stay in front of those people, it's like a direct mail campaign, but it's on steroids because we can digitally target every internet connected device inside the homes and then put your ads on their computers, their desktops, the laptops, tablets, smartphones that are all connected to the internet inside that home. And when they leave their home, we can follow them on their smartphones too and continue to put your ad in front of them. So again, Keyword search, anything on any website. Contextual search is searching for anything on something that's relevant. You know, maybe you're looking to buy a car and you're on carreviews.com or bestautos.com. These are ways that you can contextually target people. Retargeting allows us to retarget people that have been to your website. Mobile geofencing allows us to draw invisible lines around real world locations and then target the people that are inside that zone. Addressable Geofencing is similar to mobile geofencing, but we can go in and specifically geofence homes and then put your message in there. Again, direct mail hits that household one time and they either throw it away or act on it. Addressable geofencing hits the house, hits every household device four times a day for up to 30 days. So it's just more efficient. And then conversion zones, we can draw an invisible fence around your brick and mortar location and when somebody actually walks in your door, it's a way for you to hold our feet to the fire and really say, how do I know my digital campaign is working? How do I know that people are coming in after being uh, after seeing my ad? Well, if we target somebody that's in a geofence zone and that specific phone ID walks into your location, we're able to track it and provide monthly reports. Uh, and we do this monthly. We have live conversations with our data team and we optimize the campaign on a daily basis as it's running. And then again, monthly, we'll review it with you, show you how it's running, make suggestions to improve it uh, or change anything that's not, not effectively working for you in the campaign. Because again, we're using a bunch of different tactics across the digital gambit of what we can do. So Cumulus Media 
really can do it all for you between SEO, Facebook, reputation management, Google, Instagram. No matter what you need digitally, we can help you out. If you would like to schedule a 20 minute call to talk about your specific needs uh, for your business, I'm happy to schedule a Zoom call with you and make some recommendations based on your uh, marketing budget, what you're trying to stay within and what you're looking to do. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks.